My name is Alexander Cernogorac. I'm a documentary photographer from Serbia mm -hmm. and I'm really happy to be here. I'm a, a guest artist of the Kings and Queens show. Also the author of the Transbalkan project which, which is here. Right. There's also a book that I've really seen. There's a lot of people in there, a lot of stories. And you picked six only. Why these six? And I try to really pick stories which depict the reality of the Balkans and the trans lives in the Balkans. So I really thought it was important to mix young people, old people, people who've had a really difficult life, and then also younger people who are having an easier time. Yeah. Just to give a very realistic picture, yeah. Which picture you want to say something about? Well, I think, for example, this picture. Yeah. Uh, her name is Helena. Yeah. Uh, she's actually become a really good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, she used to be a, a, a general in the Serbian army before she transitioned. And then, of course, because she... this is her uniform, This right? is her old uniform. Uh, she, she was the general. She was the general in the Serbian when, army. When she was a man? Uh, before her transition, yes. Wow. And then she got fired, obviously, from the army. And she's a very brave woman because she sued the Serbian army. And she won a, a lawsuit. So she's really one of the trans pioneers in Serbia. And she looks like triumphant, right? Oh, she is absolutely tri triumphant. She's an amazing woman, yeah. But, but this is a success story. Can you take us to a, a lesser successful this is story? A really successful story. Uh, a lesser successful yeah. story could be this. Yeah. For example, Cherkica uh, is also a very strong woman. What I love about this is you feel the misery, but you see her strength. Yeah. Is that is that? I agree with you. Thank you for noticing that yeah. because yes, she lives in poverty. She lives in the poorest region of Europe. Uh, she has no access to medical transition, mental health, none of that. Please tell me you were six hours with her, talking to her, and what happened with uh, the passers-by? With her I was, and we went to have coffee in the city of Pristina, and we were just sitting, and men came up and they just started spitting at her. So on her? Or on, on her. her. On her. On her. So for me, it was really, really just shocking. For her, it was normal. She didn't even react. So this is what really inspired me to do this project because, you know, these people deserve, uh, the anyone deserves a decent life. But then she also told me that most, not most, but some of these men that abuse her, they're also her clients. Oh my God. So it's a lot of, you know, self-loathing, self-hate, self auto-homophobia. Can you please come here and tell something about your project? Thank you guys. First of all, thank you all for coming. Thank you guys for making it possible for me to be here and for all these people to see my work. Transbalkan is a project I started some four years ago. Uh, it basically aimed to raise awareness of the trans community in the Balkans, so it's the 12 countries starting from Slovenia all the way to Turkey. Because I think this was the first a trans person in, in Serbia? One of the first, I guess. Yeah. Uh, she comes from Bosnia, yeah. she's of Serb origin, yeah. but she is one, she's the oldest person in the project, yeah. and she actually managed to transition back in 1995, when this was not possible to do in the Balkans. Right. So she had to sell all of her a lot of her estate to go to Germany and to be able to transition. And I was really lucky to be able to meet her maybe a month before she passed away. Um, she's, she's incredible. And it was really important for me to show all ages, all socioeconomical levels. And, and it's an ageless story. You know, trans people now get a lot of attention, but trans people have always existed. Yeah. Alex is from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, yeah. uh, so from the Balkans. He's an example of uh, the younger generation really taking, having more power and more, more opportunity. He has moved to Oslo, he lives in Norway, he's doing his PhD, he does go, right. he goes back to Bosnia very often, right. he's very active right. in, uh, you know, in the LGBT struggle. Uh, and you know, it shows there is a brighter future for the right. trans people. So this was really important for me to include all of the realities. So it's not a dark story. Um, there's a bit of everything. My last question, maybe the most difficult one. Why are you interested in this? Interested in this? Uh, a lot of people, of course, ask me this. 
I had the privilege, I was very lucky to meet trans people young in my life. And I was always in, in awe and I, I've just never seen people with so much strength. I'm very, very much respectful of their strength, their willingness to go forward. They're strong, they're powerful, and there's nothing they will stop it to, 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 to live their truth. Right. I was really attracted to this. Right. And, um, you know, I'm a gay man myself, yeah. so I'm part of the community, I'm not trans, but I have a special kind of respect for these people. Right. And I also found it important to show that, you know, sexuality is one thing, gender identity is something else. So, it, so this much. is a thank you so much. Thank you.